let's have a look at an example of a parallel plate actuator in an application. <clears throat> and here we see a digital light projector. It's a typically the type of projector that you have in a lecture hall here at KTS or in many places. And uh, basically how this kind of system works is that one of these um, projectors contains a projection lamp. Let me see. A projection lamp that shines light on a micromirror plate. And the micromirrors on the plate either reflect the light through a lens and on the screen or into a black wall. And um, so you typically have a, a, a micromirror plate with a million or more little, uh, for example, here, five million little micromirrors. Such a chip can look like this. So every micromirror is on top of a little CMOS circuit that drives the micromirror. And it's actually, here you can see the cross section of such a micromirror, aluminum micromirror, where you can see that the micromirror can either be straight or it can be tilted. It will be tilted if it's attracted <coughs> by, a, um, by um, an electrode underneath. So here you have the, actually the electrostatic actuator. Parallel plate actu uh, micro electrostatic actuators are only one of many uh, different types that you can think of. Um, it's perhaps easiest to understand. A second type is that of curved electrode actuators. Um, and um, that is the next example that we're going to look at. So what is the problem with a parallel plate uh, elect electrostatic actuator? Well, electrostatic forces uh, scale um, uh, diminish with the square root of the distance. So that means that they can be very high on very small distances, say like if you need to deform something one micrometer or two micrometer, you can get very high electrostatic force on this distance. If you want to deform something, say 20 or 100 micrometer, the forces will be so low that they become impractically low. And one way of circumventing this problem, so the problem that you have a limited, uh, a limited force at a high distance, is to work with so-called curved electrode actuators. You see two examples here. Let's look at the, at the left one first. And you can see here we have two fixed electrodes, a top and a bottom one. And in between there is a little film that is fixed here at the top and here at the bottom. And this film can roll either to this side or to this side. And you can see that in this case there is an electrostatic potential between the film and the bottom electrode. So you see where the film is in contact with the electrode you get a very high force. And where there's a large distance, where they're at large distance, they have a very low force. But no matter how I roll this film to left or right, there will always be a region here where the electrode, where there is a, a gap, an, an air gap, and where this air gap is small. So there's always one position in this electrode where I have a very large electrostatic field that I actually can use to induce a movement. So I can roll, if I put on the voltage between these two, um, I can roll this film from the left side to the right side. Then if, I'm, if I have rolled all the way to this position, I can switch off this electrode and I can put the voltage between the flexed electrode and the top electrode and then I can similarly roll back the entire electrode and then use the electrostatic potential that would be in this position. Hmm? So here you see an out-of-plane version of this and <clears throat> on the other side here you see an in-plane version where they're actually the, this, these are two this curved structures here, there are the two fixed electrodes and this little beam here, this free hanging beam, can either roll onto the left side or roll onto the right side. Um, you can also see that there are small little dots here. These are freestanding structures that stick out a little bit. You can't see that in detail, but there's little spin sticking out. So as this actuator is rolling down on this side, actually, it rolls in contact with a little pins that stick out here, so it cannot get in contact with the counter electrode, otherwise you would have a short circuit. Hmm? Let's now have a quiz question. We've seen two types of actuators, a rolling actuator, an out-of-plane version and an in-plane version. And the question is simply, select the actuator type that you think is easiest to manufacture. Well, the answer is that most likely this in-plane actuator will be easiest to manufacture. And why is that? Well, it is fabricated in a single lithography step. You etch, it's a, it's a surface micro-machine structure, as you can see. It's etched in a single step, just one layer of photoresist etching and then under-etching the structure so that the movable structures become free and the big structures are not entirely 
uh, unread, so they are still fixed on the substrate. So it is only two process steps to fabricate this structure. Whereas here you have a complex uh, uh, manufacturing because you can see this film has to be put in contact here, so there's a spacer in between here, and here the film has to be underneath the spacer and here on top of the spacer. So just to fabricate that is really not straightforward and will uh, require um, complex machining, and especially if you want to have several of these structures on a single wafer. We started talking about parallel plate actuators, then we showed that curved electros electrode actuators solve the problem that you can in the way that you can always have a small air gap at, at least at some point. The third type of electrode that is actually quite common and used in a lot of um, in a lot of uh, commercial products is the comb drive. So the accelerometers and gyroscopes that you have today built in into your mobile phone, so the ones that measure your position and your rotation, these are built, almost 100% of them are built using comb drive actuators. So what is a comb actuator? <coughs> the comb actuator is a structure where I'm going to show that with my hands. So you have one fixed electrode and it has a number of comb teeth and then you have one movable electrode. And these teeth can move into each other. They cannot touch each other, but they can move uh, into each other. And this is this hand is fixed. Uh, yeah, this hand is fixed and this hand is the moving hand. So you can see this one, if you have a, a voltage, they will be attracted here. If I take the voltage away, this is pulled back by a spring force that, that in, to, to which this moving hand is uh, attached. So uh, you can see that also here on the, the drawing. So in this case, actually, we have two fixed electro electrodes, a top one and a bottom one, and we have a, a two movable combs, a top and a bottom, that are actually... So this structure here is entirely uh, suspended by uh, four little springs. And can just move in the in the up down direction here. And depending on where I put the voltage, I will move, be able to move this mass to this point or to this point. Um, a great advantage of this is that you can have a uh, large travel lengths. Uh, so basically, how is the the principle behind this? Basically, this works as a capacitance, and the capacitance is of course highest where you have an overlap between the teeth. So between this point and this point, to have a high electric field. And so if I put in a uh, an, uh, potential over this, this will be sucked in because the more these fingers move in here, the lower, the more I lower the energy and the capacitance that I have between these two plates. And uh, this is not limited in uh, travel length uh, anymore. This kind of travel length you can have easily like up to 100 micrometers or so with this kind of comb drives. Also, they're easy to, per, to uh, position linearly. Um, Whereas the parallel plates, you see, they have this quadratic behavior uh, on, on the voltage. Here, it will be a more linear behavior you get. They can be used for uh, in-plane um, movement, as you can see. You can also use them out-of-plane uh, for out-of-plane versions, if you want that. Out-of-plane movement. Hmm? Here we see an example of an implementation of such structure. This is an... Um, uh, this is an, uh, a relay, an, electro, an, an electrical switch, and the idea is that you want to switch a current between this electrode here, that the current will go through the leg, and you want the current gap to, to go through this electrode here. So either this gap is open or it is closed. You can see that this part here is the suspended comb, and I can attract it using this fixed comb, I can attract it to this side so that these two parts are getting in contact with each other. Or I can attract it using this comb electrodes, and then I can push away, uh, pull away the, um, the contact away from the, from, so that uh, the, the whole switch opens 